All right, beautiful people. Today, I am gonna curate for you a scene out of Braveheart. And why I'm gonna do this is because I would just tell the story, but there's so many gems in this one scene that it's too many to tell the story. I'd rather let the producer that spend a million dollars to make the movie tell you what it is and then I'll talk about it. So please stay tuned and watch this one scene where a Scottishman and an Irishman want to join the band of Braveheart's movement. Volunteers coming in. William Wallace, we've come to fight and to die for you. Stand up, man. I'm not the Pope. My name is Fodron. My sword is yours. I brought you this. We checked them for arms. I brought you this. My wife made it for you. Thank you. <laughs> Him, that can't be William Wallace. I'm prettier than this man. All right, Father. I'll ask him. If I risk my neck for you, will I get a chance to kill Englishmen? Is your father a ghost? Or do you converse with the Almighty? In order to find his equal, an Irishman is forced to talk to God. Yes, Father. The Almighty says, don't change the subject, just answer the fucking question. Mind your tongue. Insane Irish. Smart enough to get a dagger past your guards, old man. That's my friend, Irishman. And the answer to your question is yes. You fight for me, you get to kill the English. Excellent! Stephen is my name. I'm the most wanted man on my island. Except I'm not on my island, of course. More's the pity. Your island? You mean Ireland? Yeah, it's mine. You're a madman. <laughs> 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 I've come to the right place then. <laughs> so, now what you just saw was two people that wanted to join the band. One man was a Scottishman. What's important about realizing that is this man comes to Braveheart in the same garb that Braveheart is wearing. He comes from the same land that Braveheart is from. And he comes with the, the sacred offering and routine and ritual of a Scottishman. So when he comes in that quiet demeanor in presentation, they give him no second thought, right? Of course, here you are, you're a countryman. Of course you want liberation like I do, like we do, right? On the other end, next, here comes an Irishman. The Irishman comes in a different garb, a different speech, different customs, and is looking crazy to them, right? They can't understand if he's sane or insane. The thing that I want you to notice right now is how do we question the people that are coming into our lives? What are we looking for to know if a person is with us? Are we looking for what the eyes can see or what the spirit can feel? Because there's a huge difference in between those two things. And as a Christian-centered man, I often notice it when I'm speaking to my fellow Christian, although I serve everyone, when I'm talking to my fellow Christian brothers and sisters, they want me to speak the same way they do. They want me to say words in the same order they do. They want me to pray and behave in the same way they do to trust me that we're serving the same person, right? And we do it with skin tone. Not all skin folk are kin folk. There's so many ways that we have to recognize that just because a person looks like you doesn't mean they're with you. And just because a person acts like you doesn't mean they're with you. And just because a person does not look or act like you does not mean they're not with you. Okay? So let's go back to the next part. Let's go back to the movie and let's finish the scene. <laughs> Thank you. 
sure didn't the Almighty send me to watch your back? I didn't like him anyway. He wasn't right in the head. All right, guys, let's get into the meat and potatoes now. This is the reason I wanted you to get here. The first one was the setup to make this scene memorable. Here you have Braveheart, bow and arrow pulled. He's watching the deer. He's in hunter mode. He hears the rustle on his side. He looks over. Irishman is running at him with a knife, with a sword, right? And he brings the sword, he brings the bow and arrow over, and he sees someone that he didn't trust because he didn't look like him. He didn't act like him. He didn't speak like him. He wasn't from the same land as him. And here he has the bow on him, and he's an amazing shot, as we know in the early movie, and he doesn't pull the trigger. Why doesn't he pull the trigger? Someone's running at you with a sword, you pull the trigger, but he does not. Something internal, governing, overrides the danger. He allows the Irishman to throw a sword at him and still does not pull the arrow, does not release the arrow, y'all. This is a guy that has seen battle. What is happening in the heart and the courage and the one with godness that has saved Braveheart from every possible foil up until this moment, right? He has been blessed throughout the whole movie to even be alive at this moment. The sword goes over the shoulder, boom! And who does it hit in the heart? The Scottishman who is over Braveheart's back with a knife. So the reason this is so important, y'all, is because a lot of times we get confused on who's holding the knife behind our back. And when the person's rushing at us with big energy, when they're rushing at us with intensity that the moment deserves, we feel like they're attacking us and we don't realize, is there something behind me? Are they seeing something that's attacking me that I don't see, that has nothing to do with me, that they are actually here for me? And he drops the bar at the end of the scene. Are you not sure that God sent me here to defend you? To protect you? Now, obviously, something in Braveheart's soul knew it because he put his life on the line. He didn't stop him. He could have stopped the whole thing and they both would have died. So once again, just because they look like us doesn't mean they're with us. Just because they dress like us, they say the words like us doesn't mean they're with us. And just because they don't dress, act, or speak like us doesn't mean they're not with us. Are you in tuned enough with the hand on your life, on the covering on your life, to know the difference of when God is sending people to help you, and you may block in that blessing while allow the people you think are with you to put a knife in the back? The movie did it perfect. I thank Braveheart. It's a blessed movie. I encourage you to watch the whole thing because it's a faith story. It's a passion story. It's a courage story. And I wish it would just end right before he died because nobody needs to see that anymore. When all of us are doing what we were meant to do, there's no target. Braveheart was one name, but he had a tribe of people that were working with him that believed in something greater. And he was just the one that could speak to the voice greater in all of them. And they found courage. But without any one of them showing up, the outcome would never have been the same. And so without you, the outcome would never be the same. And together, we're going to do beautiful things, y'all. I'm going to curate videos like this from so, from now on. When, I, when it's short and juicy and I can tell you the story, I'll do it. Sometimes I'm going to let Hollywood work because Hollywood works, right? So much love, y'all.